Feeling inspired by hosts Ron and Tyler? This episode of the Movie Buffs podcast is brought to you by the YouTube workout channel Time to Train Fitness. With all things YouTube, it's free. Jump into a bar class, crank out a cycling workout, or pump out a strength session. Everything you need to work out for free at home. Check out the description and subscribe today. Welcome, everyone, to a rather new episode in the Movie Buffs podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia, and today I'm going to be doing a rankings, a rankings of some popular TV shows that came out. It is the middle of November, right before Thanksgiving, and so you might be at that time where you're going to have some extra time. You're going to have some time to catch up on your shows, sit back with potentially family to watch some shows, or you can force them to watch some shows that you've been <laughs> missing out on. And I'm going to be doing a rankings. This is the first of this. And really, I think it's a good one because as I've talked to some friends, they haven't even seen some of these. So I'm going to try to keep it as spoiler free as possible in terms of just giving brief descriptions, my initial thoughts on them. I would recommend all three of these shows that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Rings of Power, House of Dragons, and Andor. And keeping it spoiler free, just giving my initial reaction. I'm going to talk about some of the names, but really try to keep it spoiler free so that you go watch and then return. Because we also looking at some new content we might make in the new year. We might do full reviews on these episode by episode, things of that nature. And so doing a rankings hopefully creates a little bit of uh, drama maybe because what you think might be my favorite, depending upon how well you know me, or what maybe you think is the best of those three could vary. And I'd love to hear your feedback on these shows because – they were rather costly as we talk about all of these. I mean, that was one of the things talking about Rings of Power, how much Amazon dropped on this series. And so thinking about House of Dragons, HBO doesn't mess around with their budgets as well. They put money behind these and Disney's Disney. So they have money as well. Three power packed budgets and what they put out. How do they stack up? And so let's kick it off. I'm going to start with number three here, and it's probably no surprise this one, actually, because if you've seen those three, you might agree right off the bat. And number three for me is Rings of Power. Now, I've said this to a lot of people, and I'm actually going to contradict myself later on in this podcast, which happens all the time, but Rings of Power had the ultimate playbook with Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And depending upon what you think about those, which ones you think are the best, I personally prefer the Lord of the Rings trilogy over the Hobbit trilogy. I can't really decipher the Hobbit trilogies. And of course, I can probably tell you uh, what happened because I remember I read the book a long time ago, but uh, it was not as impactful to me personally compared to Return of the King, Two Towers. I mean, I remember as a teen, Standing in line, going to midnight showings before they had the app where you can save your seat and you had to stay in a line for hours. We would walk to the movie theaters, me and my friends, we would walk to the movie theaters and stand in line for hours before (laughs) seeing it or going to a midnight showing on a Thursday, knowing that you have to wake up super early for school the next day and just dragging through a Friday. So with the Rings of Power, They had the playbook. They know what people liked. They know what people didn't like. And the filming of it, it just didn't mesh. I remember thinking that during the first episode, how is this Lord of the Rings? I I mean, I thought right away, wow, this looks good. You can tell they put money in it. Just watching the opening credits, even though it's some sand getting blown around, they've got some money behind it. But it almost didn't feel like in the same universe. And this will be contradicted later on with House of Dragons and uh, talking about now characters. I found myself, I wasn't as familiar with the characters, so it was a little tougher, at least with House of Dragons. You hear some of the names, Targaryen, Baratheon, 
and you're like, okay, I know those ones, and you can kind of put a name to a, na a name to a face, and you're like, okay, like where is this? With Rings of Power, you're like, oh, who is this? And uh, I think this is in. I was really digging my memory for some of these and trying to connect to them to the uh, Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings and Aragorn and um, the elves, all that kind of stuff. But the filming of it, the feel of it, it didn't come across in any of the episodes, I'll be honest. And I've kind of got more like the Final Fantasy, the more, um, which it is, I mean, sci-fi, but I got a different vibe from it. And... I think a part of that was some of the choices in directors. I didn't look up a lot of them, but some of the names I did recognize, they were horror. One of the ones that stood out to me was one of the directors from the Jurassic World trilogy that came out. He did the second one. I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he did the second one, which was a, fa a fan favorite. Some people were pretty mad about Colin Trevorrow coming back, but there was a horror director coming in and, that episode, I remember. It was kind of scary. So the vibe of it was different. And it doesn't necessarily mean it was bad, but you didn't get the feel that you got with the other ones. And I think that, that some viewers will probably feel the same way. And trying to now go back to the characters and the timeline, where they fit in, all that kind of stuff. A piece that I got with House of Dragons that I didn't get with Rings of Power was some of the connections I found myself on IMDb, looking their names up, and then going to Lord of the Rings IMDb and Hobbit IMDb, trying to see if there was any type of connections. And sometimes they didn't fit, and sometimes you weren't clear on the name. And you're like, oh, that's what that's the name that they said, or is this the character in there because of the makeup and or the CG that they have put on them? So it took a bit, and that goes into the, my next piece on this one was and why it's third in my rankings is that it took a long time to get going on anything. How much buildup can you do? Oh my goodness. So much buildup to get to any type of action. Just story building, story building. And of course, a new series, there's going to be some story building. There's going to be some action. But I mean, at least in HBO shows, even Disney shows, you get some action. You get something right off the bat that catches you. There was so much story building that you were trying to piece together and you didn't know where any of it fit that you couldn't really sink your teeth into it. And we stuck with it. Me and my wife, we stuck with it. We tried to stay with it every single week. And I know that some listeners that uh, are friends, I know that they didn't or they got turned off after the first episode. And I just say, oh, come on, just stay with it, stay with it because I wanted somebody to talk to about it. Uh, but uh Hopefully you stuck with it and hopefully they get better in the second season. Now a positive. And the, if this is the positive, I don't know what that really means for the outcome of it. But a positive is that you can tell they spent money on it. And I said this one already. The look, the CG, the acting, directing, all those they spent money on. I mean, these are high quality actors. That at no point did I find myself like, oh, can that person really act? Or man, they skipped on the CG on that. Or man, the the... This, this, the, the city that looks fake or and the water any of that stuff no you know they spent money on this and it came across with everything that it looked crisp it looked like they had some new type of 8k some type of a camera that was out of this world and it looked that good now the battles and this will be the last piece i'm going to talk about the battle scenes and with Prepping for this episode, creating some notes from it, I think this might be a negative, is that I can't really put my thumb on any piece that was like, wow, that really stood out for me, or wow, that was such an insane battle. The orcs or the uh, the elves, the dark elves, or anything that kind of stuff, nothing really stood out to me. You're kind of just thinking the whole time, okay, who is the bad guy? You're trying to guess who's who, and you're trying to figure out hmm, is it this character? Oh no, are they pulling a trick on us? And that's why I'm trying to tiptoe around something right there because I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but none of the battles really stood out, which I think is a negative with something you're watching Rings of Power. You want to see them battle it. You want two tower style action where 
They're just getting at it. Elves are doing sweet moves, riding shields, shooting amazing bow and arrow, bow and arrow shots. You want the humans battling with their swords, doing awesome things. You want the dwarves swinging those axes, all that kind of stuff that we're used to. So that is really my roundup on that. Moving now to number two. And with this second one, uh, it wasn't really a toss up for me. And that's why I think this is a surprise with these three is number two for me was House of Dragons. Yeah, House of Dragons. Did I like it? Yeah, I liked it. I liked all of it. Um, I'm going to, of course, talk about some negatives of it, but it is my number two. So you can guess what my number one is. But House of Dragons was solid. And that's why I said already I'm going to contradict myself with this one. Did you get the Game of Thrones feel right off the bat? Not right off the bat. It took once you hear the names, once you hear the period-ish of it, then you get some of the feel of it. But it was definitely filmed differently. They had more money to throw into it. They had more expensive cameras. They had de <laughs> definitely better script writing than the last season. So just watching the first one and after the horrendous last season of Game of Thrones, you were kind of hooked. And I believe it was the most watched premiere, the first episode. And they didn't disappoint. I mean, with the jousting, with the fighting, with the characters being introduced, there wasn't any disappointing moment from the get-go. Now, some of the negatives of it, and this doesn't come for a, for a couple episodes, but for me, the time jumps. That was the hardest thing. And I've spoken with a couple people about this before, was that the time jumps were the hardest thing for me to recognize. I always found myself the first couple minutes, three, five minutes. How many years before did this go? Was it three? Is it the same time? And I mean, once they start jumping really quickly, then you're starting to put together the math faster in your head. And some of it's confusing because you're looking at some of the kids and like, oh, wait, is this, is this the same kid? Or is this the younger kid? Is this the new kid? Because you know that they're having babies. And that was the negative for me because <laughs> taking that time from the get-go to try to figure out what that time jump was hard. And were some of them necessary? I don't know. I don't know if the every time jump was. The actress that played Rhaenyra, and I'm not ruining any names here. I'm not trying to give any spoilers here. But the actress that played Rhaenyra from the get-go, I personally enjoyed her more than the latter, even though the latter was in a show on Amazon that I liked. But the younger actress, um, you know, I enjoyed her version of the character because once there was the time jump with her, and this is all information that was already out there, once the time jump happens, it becomes a more serious tone for Rhaenyra. And so that piece of it was, uh, it was a little bit of a tonal shift for me that it became more serious. You know, she is getting married for uh, purposes of the throne. She's having kids that uh, become part of the story later on. And so with these jumps and the thematical changes and some actors and actresses not getting a new actor, it becomes one of those things where you're like, why didn't this character get aged up? Why did this one get aged up so much? So that's my only real negative of it. Is it a, a show that I hope they make five, eight seasons of? Yeah, I do. And I, I'm sure they can. I, I just thought that really they jumped ahead really quickly. And uh, I will give you a little tip here that if you're someone that is like me, you go on IMDb, you're looking up the names, you get a little too excited and you go on YouTube, you can definitely find out more stuff about what can potentially happen? Because this was written off of one book. It wasn't really a book. I think it was actually a chapter. And correct me if I'm wrong in that, but it was one of those that they didn't have much. So they're kind of making their own content from it. And this is actually where the directors got a lot of, or the creators, the showrunners from Game of Thrones got a lot of he for, was they didn't have any source material and they were going off it and people weren't fans of it. The showrunners for the first season of House of Dragons, they did a solid job. Now, one of those showrunners is leaving after one season, so we'll see how we go into the next season, but really solid start. Now, number one here, and 
with this one, I got to say that I have been blown out of the water with Andor. And I know that there's a lot of people in that same department as me that they weren't probably expecting much from it. They weren't expecting the action of it, the acting, the story, the theme, all that kind of stuff. And they're probably blown away like me. With Andor, I found myself many times, and there's two episodes in my mind that after I watched them, I was either uh, in in goosebumps or that I was just hyped up because of how good it was. And I'm not going to give those away because I don't want to go into those. That's not what this episode's about. It's hopefully a push to go watch it. And I know that <laughs> my pod, my podcasting buddy, Ron, is going to give me the, uh, the negative on this because I was a fan of Obi-Wan. I was a fan, or I am a fan of Mandalorian. I am a fan of Boba Fett. I liked all of them. I liked all Star Wars content. I just, I'm one of those fans that probably people get upset about because I just like they're making new content. That's my favorite thing. They're making new content with characters that I like. I'm not arguing over direction of that kind of thing. I mean, the piece that probably most people will laugh at is that I like Solo. And I had to fight Ron to watch Solo. I had to trick him with some food to watch it. But I li- I liked it. I do like it to this day. I'm not one of those people that gets all butthurt because of the actor that they cho- chose for Han was not who they wanted or whatever. I don't care. I like that they're making new content. And with Andor, it really pushed the bar. It really set it high. And a lot of the pieces of it, people can really watch it and they get some of the vibe of Star Wars, but it's a shift that was pushing it even more. And I almost think that they had to get you ready for it. Now, let me break that down a little more. When The Mandalorian came out, one of the bigger things that I liked was the scoring of it. Ludwig Gorenson, he was the composer for it. And really, he created some of the same tones. He gave you the feel of the music, some of it with some new. And those are the things that people enjoy. And I enjoyed that they kept some of the feel of it with the scoring. Uh, I'm talking about Mandalorian right now. But with Andor, they took it to a new level. And I think that that's why they had to set you up. They had to give you some of what you like with Mandalorian, with Boba Fett, with Obi-Wan. They had to give you some of that, give you some of the change, give you some of the feel of what they're trying to create to set you up for Andor. And that's why if people are saying, oh, well, why did they just make everything like Andor? Why don't they make everything feel like Andor? You need to get ready. If you just go from zero to 100 right off the bat, you're going to be upset. You're going to make a lot of fans upset. So I think getting people back into it, getting new fans into it, and then getting them ready for Andor, I love it. I love it. Theme, tone, awesome. The story, direction, I hope they make multiple seasons of this, even though they can't because they're on timeline with it. But the scoring of it, you feel the intensity. The two episodes that I mentioned before that I walked away, and one of them I, I said, I honestly, I was just like, fuck yeah, that was a great episode. And... If you listen to any of my podcasts, you know, I don't really swear. I'll say there because I loved that episode (laughs) and hopefully you'll feel the same way and maybe you can come back and guess which one I'm talking about, but you get a feel that you just so amped up for and you want more of it and you love the direction that they're taking with it. Now with the filming, you get some of the vibes, same, same feel of the other two shows I talked about this. They're not filmed exactly the same way as the other episodes, the other series. You get the feel. Uh, there was a point in one of the episodes where they were on, were they on Coruscant? That you get a little vibe of it, but I honestly got more like Minority Report. I got a little bit of Star Trek feel from some of the background, and it didn't bother me. I just liked that they were showing more of the ground level stuff. You weren't just in an alleyway or bar. You were able to get a feel of the people on the streets, things of that nature, different stores, different areas, and packing that with fantastic acting. And I don't think it's too much of a secret that, or it's not a secret. I've seen many thumbnails about it. Andy Serkis is in Andor. And the episodes with Andy Serkis, and especially one of the last ones, 
I mean, come on. He should really be in every single movie. He, I don't get how he does not get as as much recognition as he needs. He's fantastic. And, the, and or he kicks it in the butt and he rocks it. I love Andy Serkis after watching his episodes. And put that with Diego Luna. I mean, come on. You're getting the evolution of his character, of the one that you saw in Rogue One, where he's already a part of the Rebellion. And with this one, I don't want to give too much away, but you're seeing that evolution. You might be surprised of what you see in the first episode because it's not the same. And you see the evolution and the evolution of the rebellion, all these different things. So top acting, filming, scoring, theme, tone. I love it. And so hopefully that was a surprise for you to hear that the number one for me is Andor. And I know that there's other people out there that feel the same, that Andor is just crushing it right now. Now go watch, listen, respond, and come back. Let's hear what you think. This episode was a ranking where don't give too much away. Just hopefully promote these and get people to watch these and come back, engage with us, and let's create more like this. We're going to create more rankings, more content coming out, and hopefully you enjoy these. Go sit on the couch, binge. Binge it up, Netflix, HBO, Amazon. Come back, share your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey listeners, host Tyler Valencia here. I want to tell you about a product I wear every day and has been a game changer for my health. Naboso Performance Insoles. The Naboso line of insoles are recommended for waking up the feet when standing at work, enhancing foot awareness, and increasing foot stimulation. I personally wear the Duo insoles, which offer the highest level of stimulation, and I can't say enough positive things about them. I used to have foot pain after sitting at my desk, working away all day, and will make getting ready to work out a process and a half. Using these insoles has helped me, and if you want to give them a try, Head to the link in the description and then come back to share your feedback with us.